So, um, good afternoon and greetings, everyone. Um, definitely excited to, you know, uh, talk to all of you and share some insights about how uh, the transformation of this journey um, of digital accessibility can happen through the DQ University um, platform. Um, just to quickly introduce myself, my name is Abhin Roy Chaudhary and I'm the VP of Operations for DQ Systems APAC. Um, I've kind of uh, completed my um, uh, CFO program from IM Calcutta and then uh, completed my MBA from MIT Pune. And then um, I have an overall 18 plus years of experience in um, consultative sales, marketing, business development, IT operations. Um, I'm with DQ for um, over four years now. And, um, you know, I, I play multiple roles within the organization. And along with that, um, you know, I, I have a good amount of experience in terms of my startup founding journey and um, a, a lot of entrepreneurial experience that helps me to, uh, you know, kick things off. Uh, quickly. Um, now, uh, with that, I would want maybe Shripad, if you could introduce yourself. Yeah, sure. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. I am Shripad Dalvi. I joined DQ a little over four years back. I'm part of DQ University product team and currently working as a development lead. Prior to joining DQ, I've worked extensively with many startups. Awesome. Thank you so much, Shripad. Next slide, please. So um, I know that many of you um, might already know DQ and many of you know what we do, but I'm sure there are a lot of audience who've joined us new today. And uh, for all of us, I would like to kind of give a quick background and introduction about uh, DQ um, as a company and what we have been doing so far. Um, so. DQ right now has um, expanded uh, its operations from just from the US to, we also have now presence in APAC and uh, we also have presence in Europe. Um, so overall, we have three offices, uh, one being in the US, one in India in Hyderabad and the other in uh, Netherlands to cater to the Europe market. Um, DQ was founded in 1999 by Preeti Kumar, uh, who is our CEO as an accessibility consultancy and services company. Um, and then from that, obviously we have made a lot of transitions and now we are into a zone of, um, you know, um, calling ourselves as a 360 degree solution provider where we, we do have offerings of both uh, or, or kind of trainings plus products plus services. Um, we in in 2014 we launched DQ University uh, with the intent and idea of providing knowledge around digital accessibility training for masses. And now the DQ University portal is approximately close to a decade, and it is a very very powerful uh, platform for any any organization or any individual who is uh, thinking about enhancing their. Um, accessibility knowledge. In addition to that, in 2015, we open sourced our AxCore rule engine, which is kind of um, a very powerful rule engine um, utilized by companies like Google, Microsoft um, in, in some of their products. And interestingly, this is a very, very popular rule engine among the developers. So we have um, last month, we have crossed approximately 750 million downloads of AxCore. Uh, the best part about our open source rule engine is that because of this open source rule engine, um, all our products are powered by the same rule engine. So uh, in terms of uh, efficiency and in terms of the results, um, we, we already have a lot of validation uh, from uh, the rule engine itself, which is powering our tools. Um, finally, in terms of, uh, you know, in 2020, we also launched one of the uh, most popular conference now, which is called as AxCon. Um, and this is the largest accessibility conference that DQ hosts every year 
in the time period of approximately March uh, second week. Um, and I'm sure many of you might have attended it this year. Um, so this is kind of a quick overview about DQ. Um, in addition to that, what I also want to kind of talk about, um, next slide please, um, is kind of our overall offerings, right? Um, so our overall offerings obviously range from, you know, typically the um, designer part of the journey to uh, eventually releasing a platform. And what we do promote is a concept of shift left. And if you look at the slide right now, uh, where, you know, for designers, we have products like Axe for Designers. Uh, we have, uh, for developers, we have Axe Dev Tools. Um, for testers, we have Axe Auditor. And for post productions and central accessibility leaders and SMEs, we have Axe Monitor. Now, this is the product gamut that we have that allows you to go ahead and utilize um, DQ's products to become self-sustainable in your accessibility journey and to enhance your knowledge of utilizing these products well and also making sure that you're clear about the concepts of VCAG and the fundamentals of accessibility and even how accessibility plays essential roles in your respective roles of either being a designer, developer, tester, or a QA, um, or <clears throat> eventually a, a, a subject matter leader for accessibility. Uh, DQ University is the platform that kind of hosts all information related to not only uh, our products, but it also allows you to utilize it in terms of improving your VCAG knowledge and the specific uh, you know, uh, things that you need to take care of during your uh, particular development roles. Um, with that, um, what I, I definitely want all of you to know that as DQ, our kind of mission is digital equality. And that's our, uh, that, you know, what we call it is our mission, vision, and passion, right? So, so that, that's where I think, um, you know, today's session would be very powerful, where you would be able to understand how DQ University can help you, um, you know, uh, evolve in that journey of digital accessibility and I'll learn a lot more. Um, so um, next slide, please, Shripad. Okay, great. So I think with this, um, what I would love to do is maybe, Shripad, you can take it over and walk us all through the DQ University, the platform, the capabilities, the new features that we've added, and how it can be beneficial for individuals and various organizations. Yeah, sure. Thank you. So um, hello, everyone. Uh, you just heard about DQ's vision and mission. Talking about DQ University, it offers mainly three things. Accessibility skill training for professional development, on-demand de on answers to accessibility questions. So basically, DQ University can be used as a reference library. So once you take a course or set of courses, engagement usually does not end there. You may have some questions from time to time uh, as you're working on projects. And you can find some answers to those questions on DQ University. Uh, we also offers, offer uh, models of accessible core components and best practices that you can leverage on your projects uh, as you uh, work, take on more and more projects. Uh, with these offerings, DQ University can assist organizations to build sustainable accessibility program. Now, to follow sustainable accessibility maturity model, within an organization, we typically need to cover five areas. So uh, first one is commitment and vision, knowledge and skills, software tools, strategic processes, and analytics uh, and accountability. Just give me a minute. Yeah, so as you can see, DQ University basically relates to knowledge and skills. So DQ University empowers organizations by building skills and providing on-demand answers. 
Now, talking about accessibility, knowledge, and skills training, some might have a question on their mind. Do, do accessibility skill uh, still matter? Because now we have powerful tools, right? Like X Dev Tools and X Linters that can help identify accessibility issues. And with more and more uh, artificial intelligence uh, used in these software tools, uh, we reduce dependence on knowledgeable users further. And as we go further and further, uh, these tools are likely to become even more powerful. So this is a valid question. And the answer to that question is yes, skills still matter. Because knowledgeable users will be always more efficient and accurate. Just to give an example, let's say if you have a developer um, who has the basic accessibility knowledge, uh, then that developer will be always more efficient than another developer who uh, develops the code and then runs the code through these powerful tools, identifies the issues, go back to the code and fixes them. So that um, the second uh, approach will be always a little inefficient. Also accessibility is most powerful when integrated into strategy and design, which still requires accessibility experts. Okay, so we see that accessibility training can help uh, with professionals, uh, can help professionals uh, to be more proficient, but it can also help them with the professional development too, because accessibility knowledge and talent is a marketable skills for developers, QA testers, project and program managers. To establish yourself as accessibility expert, Professional certification is available through International Association of Accessibility Professionals, or uh, commonly referred as IAAP. And the university provides courses to prepare for this certification. Finally, with accessibility training, um, you know, all the developers, QA testers, managers, we can make a real difference in the lives of people with disabilities by building products that are truly accessible. Now, within an organization, not everybody needs to be at the uh, same level, uh, need to have the same level of accessibility knowledge, right? Some might need uh, a basic level and some might need at an expert level. So DQ University provides fast track courses for uh, developing basic level skills, and we have deep dive courses for developing expert level skills. Now, whatever knowledge level one is pursuing, all the answers uh, can be easily searched within DQ University courses. The next slide basically talks about, you know, the roles uh, who can take fast track uh, uh, courses and who can take deep dive courses and you will see some overlap there depending on the situation so you will see a web developers on both uh, both the sides now recently we rolled out a workflow or a set of tools called graded exam which is still in beta stage uh, but basically it allows organization to test employees accessibility skills and accordingly, we have now arranged our exams as fast track or deep type to match with our courses. So essentially uh, talking about fast track exams, they would have uh, less number of questions and, uh, and our difficulty level as well uh, would be a little lower than the deep dive. Deep dive would have, uh, apart from more questions, they would have longer duration and more difficulty level. Now, DQ University also provides checklist uh, based on your role. So we have checklist for web developers, QA testers, designers, mobile app developers, and program managers as well. Apart from this, uh, you will find on DQ University uh, many free resources. Like we have uh, many component libraries. We have DQ Squadron, 
library that you can use. We also have ARIA widget library that we post on DQ University. In addition, we do have uh, various guides for screen readers like NVDA, JAWS, VoiceOver, and Android. And we do have a guide for IAP certification in case you want to pursue that. In addition, we uh, also have uh, details on WCAG 2.2. Now, recently, I mean, it's been uh, more than a year, but we basically developed a tool called Admin Dashboard, which has many features for administrators for self-managing various aspects of accessibility training program. Through Admin Dashboard, an organization can manage its employee data, their course subscription, check the progress on the courses, assign them exams, and uh, uh, test their skills and knowledge. Now, just a few slides back, we talked about sustainable accessibility maturity model and how DQU relates to training and knowledge area among the five areas. In some way, admin dashboard help organization with another area, which is analytics and accountability. Basically, it provides a way for the management to hire and have the oversight of the accessibility program and monitor overall progress as well. With that, um, you know, we'll go over the actual tools so that you can get the feel and uh, get better idea uh, how this tool can help uh, various organizations. So just give me a minute, I will stop sharing here and I will share uh, my browser one minute. All right, you guys can see my screen, I hope. Yeah, you can see my screen? Yes, Shripad. Okay, great. So as I was saying, uh, this is the tool that can help you manage, uh, you know, organizations, uh, data, as well as uh, course subscription. So essentially um, here, through this tool, you can manage users, manage employee access to courses, uh, monitor course progress for each employee, assign exams to employees, and view exam results. So we'll, we'll start exploring uh, each of these features. So when you click on, uh, you can just click on users to uh, bring the manage user page. So you will see this page where you will find list of current users or employees of the organization. Uh, you'll see their first name, last name, all the details. A uh, particular uh, specific thing I want to highlight is the subscription. So here you will see a subscription listed for each user. So each subscription finally maps to one or more set of courses. And we'll see uh, in a few minutes uh, how you can uh, get to that detail. Now, uh, if you have a new employee, you can easily add new employee using this feature here. You can just click on add new user. And let's say I want to add, say a new employee. I have just a recent new joiner. So by entering few details, I can easily create new record and uh, I can search for the same user as well. So if I type in, you will see the new user has been created. Now, um, what happens is that in many large organizations, you will have many new joiners. So this form might not be sufficient. So for that, uh, we have developed a new uh, feature called bulk upload users. So through this feature, you can um, create 
list of uh, employee records in one shot. We, off, we have a template here, which you can download. And I'm just going to select um, one of the CSV file. So when I click on upload CSV, it basically does a preview before creating. So it shows me a list of users uh, that it is about to create. So using this feature, the large organization basically uh, create number of users in one shot. Then for a particular user, I can manage their subscription by clicking uh, this option called manage subscription. So when I click here, you can see the same uh, subscription listed on the page. And from here, I can uh, just remove some and add some other. So basically you can do subscription management from here. Now you can also edit an user uh, by clicking on the second option and you can change the name and last name, basically basic details. Um, one thing, uh, I mean, I wanted to point out here is through, if you change the name, first name and say last name, then uh, it would change in other products as well. This is because DQ University and other DQ products use common authentication and single sign-on systems. So if you change here, uh, the change would be affected uh, across uh, all the products. Yeah. And if I want to remove, let's say a particular employee has left the organization, then I can easily remove using this option and uh, you can just select, you can click on remove user button and that should remove the user. If you have multiple user records to remove, then you can do using this option over here. All right, so with this, we have seen uh, a basic way of managing uh, employee data. Now we'll go over a little bit over subscription. So if you click on this second option, subscription, you will see, uh, this particular page, I'm just refreshing one minute. Okay, I'm pulling the latest information. Um, yeah. So basically you will see uh, two sections, inactive and active subscription. So here, uh, when you open the first one, you will see all the active subscription and you can see uh, all the details. So basically you will, every subscription uh, will have expiration date. So here, I mean, this is a test data, but you would usually see a date of when that particular subscription will expire and when it started. Um, now, one of the important feature I wanted to show is uh, you can check uh, what each subscription maps to in terms of courses. So here, uh, let's say I want to check what this subscription maps to. So when I click on this, I have this option called show courses. Uh, and when you click on it, you can see the underlying courses. So these are the actual courses uh, the employees will be going through. Then there is a manage user option. So using this, I can basically see who are all, I mean, the employees whom we have assigned this particular subscription. So currently we have this many uh, employees uh, assigned to this subscription. Uh, also, please note that, um, you know, at the top somewhere here, you will find seats available. So typically what happens is that when you uh, buy subscription to courses, uh, you buy in a uh, certain amount, so maybe 50, 100, depending on your organization needs. And so actual number would be, would th say, maybe lower or maybe even higher. Uh, but this is where you can keep track on uh, seats available. So let's say uh, if I decide, I mean, if we have some new employees who have joined and I want to add them to this subscription, Let's say I will search for them and I want to add these two records. 
you will notice that the seed numbers will then go down as soon as they are added here. And if you remove uh, somebody from subscription, then the seed availability will go up. So I'm just removing the same users. Yeah, so apart from this, I mean, you can do a number of operations on this page. So you can add users as I showed from here. And you have an option to create new user from here as well. So the idea is uh, sometimes you don't want to go through the manage user page and create user there and come back here. So in case you are already here, you can just create all together new user record from here and the user will be also added to this uh, particular subscription. In addition to that, we have uh, other options here, like you can remove uh, from, from this menu option as well. But particularly what I wanted to show was, uh, you can check on the progress uh, of a particular user by clicking on the progress report. So what it will show you is, you know, how many courses they have taken and what percentage completion uh, uh, for uh, percentage completion basically for each of those courses. So you will notice some courses have been completed and some uh, were just uh, barely started. So you can get an idea uh, uh, on the status of each of the course. Yeah. Any questions so far? Okay, great. So we, we covered managing user records and assigning subscription or course uh, data to uh, each of the users. The next thing is we'll cover admin users. So typically for large organizations, uh, we would have many different levels of uh, privileges for admins. Uh, so typically we have four different roles uh, with different privileges to effectively uh, uh, do the program monitoring and management. So we have uh, one, uh, one particular role uh, called account administrator. So basically users with this role can manage all the data and perform perform operation across the entire account. Then you have subscription administrator who can manage subscription data and perform operation across, uh, across the subscription uh, assigned to them. So you will notice like there are two subscription admin and uh, there is particular subscription attached to them. And then uh, the other two types are you have account report viewers. So they will be able to generate reports uh, across the account. And then we have subscription re report viewers who can generate the report, but only for certain subscription to which they are assigned to. So I'll just quickly uh, show the interface to add. So here uh, you can select the role that you want to add. And here you can say, uh, just select the user. And, and uh, that's all. Uh, once you click add role, the user should be having that particular set of permissions. Uh, if you select subscription admin, then you need to select uh, additional uh, subscription uh, field as well. So once you select user, you can see the list of subscription you can assign. And same goes with the account report viewer. Uh, you just select the user. And in case of uh, account sub, uh, uh, subscription report viewer, you will have to specify subscription as well. Yeah. Okay, so we went over how to add and manage employee data. Um, and uh, we have covered a little bit about 
you know, how each employee is doing uh, with respect to course progress. And we did that in the subscription manage user. So if you go here and if you click manage user, you can always see using this progress report. But many times we have need to see, you know, the completion records uh, across set of users, right? Or maybe across entire organizations. So in that case, uh, we have this progress reports functionality. So when you click on this, this particular option, uh, you will see all this, uh, this particular form with all these uh, fields. So you can select the report format uh, whether you want HTML, CSV, or uh, very basic HTML. Uh, you can select a narrow down to a particular subscription. So typically, I mean, for large organization, they may not want to generate reports across uh, all the subscription, or they may have specific admins covering uh, specific subscriptions. So in which case, uh, those admins will select uh, the particular uh, subscription they want to check uh, and they will uh, basically take it from there. Uh, just select here all and then there are other fields that you can select like subscription status whether you want active in expired or do you want to see all. Um, there are some options that can you can select here so if you want to see even employee reports where uh, there have been zero progress, that they, you can select that as well. Uh, I will keep it, uh, I will not select as of now. And there are other options as well, if you want to uh, show subscription info and uh, group by subscription as well. So let me just quickly generate report and show how it looks like. So basically it will open another tab and it will show you this kind of report. So unlike the other, option I showed, right, where you can just check uh, uh, progress for one particular employee. Here you can see the entire data for all the employees. And it is a little more detailed, like apart from percentage complete, it also shows uh, if it was completed, if the course was completed fully, you will see the completion date. And you will also see when they first accessed and last accessed as well. So this information will be also displayed. Okay. All right, any questions so far? I guess Praveen has raised his hand. Uh, so should we consider this at the end of the meeting? That would be good, I guess. Okay, okay, we will do that, sure. Okay. So, uh, you know, as an organization monitors the employee progress on accessibility training, over a period of time, we would end up with many employees uh, who have completed their training. And then the next logical step usually is to, you know, test out, right, uh, employees' knowledge or skills. Uh, uh, by making them undergo an exam. So for that, uh, we have built this uh, exam module. So if you click on exam option in dashboard, you will see uh, this kind of data. So basically you will see a list of exams that have been already created. And you will see uh, when it was scheduled. So uh, either you will see an exam deadline, uh, if it's a uh, self-proctored uh, exam, or you will see a scheduled uh, time for that particular exam. So I'll talk a little bit about what is proctored exam and uh, self-proctored. So usually you can create two types of exam. Uh, so proctored exam is where uh, there will be another person working with the test taker and will be monitoring during the exam, basically like an uh, examiner. And then in the other type is self proctor where there is no uh, examiner or uh, exam proctor. And it is like a, a test that you can take uh, at your own time, yeah. So if you have a self proctored exam, then usually you will see a deadline assigned 
And if it is a proctored exam, then you will see uh, a scheduled time when the exam was scheduled. The other thing I wanted to point out is when you create an exam, it goes through various status. So when you initially create, it, go, uh, uh, it goes under status schedule. So that is one state. The other state is authorized. That is when an exam is authorized by a proctor, then uh, it goes into that state. And then when test taker actually takes the, begins the test, then it would have an active status. And when the exam is completed, you will see a completed status, yeah. So what we are going to do is we'll actually uh, create one instance uh, and uh, we'll, we'll see how, uh, what is the experience of taking this uh, exam and uh, how does it relate to two different roles, right? Uh, test taker and uh, proctor. So for that, you just click on this button called assign an exam. So I'm going to select um, one of the option here and I'm intentionally keeping it as a proctored exam. And I'm just going to put down myself as the test taker. And I'm going to select Proctor. And let's say I'm going to set it to say something like 315. Yeah, so there are just few basic fields that you need to enter. And typically uh, for proctored exam, um, you know, there would be a conference link, right? Like a Zoom link or some other, uh, if we are, if they are using some other software, then that particular uh, software link. Basically for the proctor and test taker to uh, come together and, uh, uh, you know, begin the exam together. So I'm going to create this. It will refresh the page and you will see that it has created this particular exam. Um, one thing I wanted to point out is there are different types of exam and we have different settings. So uh, here, I have this particular exam, which is, if you, if I can call it like a force proctored, it is always proctored exam. And this particular exam is always self proctored, meaning there is, uh, there is no proctor here. And then some exams uh, can be both like this one with a flag here where you can uh, enable this and you will see the number of fields uh, that you need to enter drops and there is no proctor field here as well. Yeah, so there are different types of exams and different settings. Um, you can select the one that best suits your need. Yeah, so we just created one instance and I'm just going to check uh, if, yeah, I was checking if the, email has been sent. So here is the link. So I'm just going to click on this. So the candidate or the test taker will get an email like this once you schedule uh, an exam. And when, you, when they will be uh, shown like a basic details, but there will be an exam URL which you can click and it will take them directly to the exam. Yeah. And what I will do is I will show you also the proctor view here. Can you see my uh, other browser, other interface? Yes. Um, okay. One which says razor, razor fish, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The other browser. Okay. So on my left is the candidate's view, candidate view, right? 
uh, person who will be taking the exam and on the right side is a proctor view. Okay. So it always starts with uh, proctor authorizing an exam. So I will just uh, initiate and authorize that exam. So once it uh, updates, you will see the change. Okay, so here I have authorized and the option I have is suspend. I mean, usually uh, this is rarely used, but one option uh, that we provide to the proctor. And uh, you will see that on the candidate side, also the view will be updated. Yeah, there you go. It's a little bit slow on my machine as many uh, softwares are running, so I apologize. Uh, okay, so this is the view that candidate will see and uh, now they are ready to start the exam because most exam will have time limit. So uh, they can uh, you know, uh, get things ready and when they're ready, they can just click on this link. Okay, so once they start the exam, they will see an interface like this uh, where they can begin uh, uh, the test. So they click on this exam. Let me just a little bit increase the window so that you can see properly. So we have done more recently a lot of enhancement here so that, you know, uh, test taker can check the question. They can jump to any question they would like and uh, go basically back and forth between the question. You, If you wish, you can dis, uh, basically hide this side panel and just focus on question. And this is how initially we had the interface, but more recently we have built a uh, lot more feature. So here basically you can see the list of question at a one glance and you can like browse. And here are the actual question and uh, options provided. So I'm just going to quickly answer those. And you will notice that on the left panel, you, you know, those questions are like a tick mark uh, as you complete those questions, yeah. Also, while the candidate is answering the exam, you will notice that uh, Proctor can actually get a sense you know, uh, how many questions have been answered and where exactly is the candidate with respect to finishing the exam. Okay. Now here, um, one more feature that we have developed is to make easy for the candidate is uh, if they don't want to see and they want to just focus on unanswered question, then they can just click on this option and they can go uh, that route. And as they answer, you will see the list of questions in this unanswered uh, window will keep on decreasing. Yeah. Then other feature that we have developed is, you know, sometimes you want to come back to some difficult questions later on. So you can flag a particular question and say, okay, question nine and 10, I want to answer later. And rest, I will answer, uh, continue to answer. So you can do that. And you can always go back to those flag question and review and take your time and answer those as well, yeah? So I'm just going to quickly finish this. I am down to just a few questions. Um, you have to answer one of the flagged question. And I'm going to leave one of the questions uh, unanswered. 
Okay, so this one I'm talking about. Um, and I have, as a test taker, I have an ability to submit the exam any uh, any time. But if I have some unanswered question, then at the time of submission, I will get a message that you have unanswered question and whether you want to still continue. So I'm going to say yes, okay. And once I do that, uh, behind the scene, then it will uh, calculate uh, your exam score and you will see the results displayed here as well. At the same time, uh, the proctor will also see the results. Yeah. And we also have uh, email notifications. So at, as you complete a particular exam, you will also should get an email as well. Let me just check if it's done. Yeah. So if you notice here, uh, yeah, this is the one. I, I already got an uh, email notification for us. Okay, so let me just refresh this. So I can also go to that particular exam from the dashboard as well. Now that the exam has been completed. Okay, so I can click on this detail and I can check uh, all the details related to this particular exam. Now, um, I've shown this as a, 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 a quick demo. Uh, and it may not have all the features. So for example, some of our exams have a lot more detail. And to give you that idea, let me just go uh, over one of the past results. So um, here, oops. I'm just going to search why Integrated exam research by. Okay. So here I get the list of graded exam. I'm just going to search for uh, maybe, maybe I can go with this one. The part here I wanted to uh, kind of show is this particular one. So in this exam, we actually give the score, not just at the exam level, but we would also see uh, at the particular topics level. So these are the topics within the exam, and uh, you would see how you score uh, uh, for each of the topics and where you, uh, you, where you could pass and where you failed. Basically highlight uh, where, which areas you are lacking, yeah? Okay, so that basically covers, um, you know, the exam page as well. Let me go back to our uh, presentation one more. There's one more part that I wanted to cover. So let me go to the slide mode. Okay, so we, we covered admin dashboard. We talked about managing users, uh, giving access to courses, seeing course progress. Uh, we, we went through uh, all these features and we also covered uh, graded exam. Uh, then the next part I want to cover is about LMS. So what is LMS? LMS stands for Learning Management System. So many of the large organizations have their own learning management system, usually a third party software. And in case, if you have, if you are using already uh, one particular LMS in your organization, then we can export our DQ University courses to your LMS. So we, we export uh, using industry standard called SCON, and using that export, you can just basically import into your LMS. And instead of uh, taking the course on dqnucity.com, you can uh, take the course uh, in your environment, in your infrastructure uh, within your LMS. So here we have 
a list of uh, some of the LMS uh, that uses COM and which can be used to import the greener city courses. Yeah, I think that completes the uh, presentation on the greener city. Um, here you have uh, some details if you want to get in touch and we can maybe open, uh, you know, session for questions. Uh, I guess we have one question from Pawan. Okay. So is it possible to submit if a question is neither answered nor flagged? Uh, yeah. The test, basically. Yeah. Uh, so as a test taker, uh, you can submit. Uh, it's possible to submit a question. Yes. Yes. In fact, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think I left the last question unanswered. Right. If that's what Pavan uh, is asking, so you can you can decide which question you want to answer. And uh, if you don't want to answer certain question, yes, you can. You have an option to submit the exam without answering some question. But we give the message. If you answer certain questions uh, without answering, then we will take it as, you know, basically uh, you've uh, not answered that correctly, something like that. So what if that was flagged? Yeah, so we we consciously decided, see, we, we don't, I mean, beyond that session, we don't attach uh, additional importance to flagging because, the flagging feature we develop only for the test taker so that they can mark those questions and come back. And the validity or the usefulness of the flagged question is only during that session. Because after you submit, uh, you know, it is of no use. So we, we don't, uh, uh, yeah, we don't basically uh, do anything with it. It is only meant for the test taker to come back in case they find certain question difficult. And this is a, a practical scene. I mean, we, we may have dealt with something like this practically as well, right? So sometimes some questions you may want to leave and come back and devote more time to them. So that is the whole idea. Got it. Got it. So Zoe has another question. Can the content be exported as both a Scrum 1.2 and Scrum 2004? Uh, I, I know that we do uh, export using Scrum format, uh, which I mean, I will have to uh, check with the team. Oh, which version? Like, let me. I guess it's in the QA section. I guess you'll be able to see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do Maybe know. So. Mm -hmm. We, yeah, we, we, we support Scrum format. Um, I, I think I don't know which format. I will have to check on that. Okay. But uh, many of our clients, they actively use uh, that feature and they prefer okay. to, you know, uh, import in their LMS system. Understood. So Zoe, maybe you could drop in your email. Uh, we can share the details post the meeting. Perfect. And Praveen, uh, is it possible to calculate marks on the basis of negative marking also? No, essentially, we, we don't have negative marking, right? Um, so, you know, whatever you submit, right, whether you answer or whether you have an, uh, not answered, um, we will calculate on that basis. If you have some question unanswered, we will take them as answered wrong and we will calculate accordingly. Got it. Any more questions? Cool. I guess we can call it off for the day. Abin, you wanna? Yeah. Um, so I think um, this was great, and thank you so much, everyone, for being able to attend the session. Mm -hmm. uh, we will keep posting more um, like upcoming webinars on our LinkedIn page. So keep following us, and um, you know, let's spread the word across and uh, make. Um, you know, whatever is out there in internet digitally accessible. So thank you so much, everyone, and you all have a great rest of your day.
Thank you so much, Shripa. Thank you, Aben. Thank, Thank you, Ayush. Thank you, Shripa. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.